Hello, welcome to Math 256 Online. My name is Marcia Corby and I'm going to be your instructor this semester and I'm super excited that you are joining us. I wanted to give you just a few heads up on things that you're going to need for the class so you can find a way to purchase those um, and also give you just sort of a brief overview of what you're in for for the next semester. First of all, let's talk about that this is a math course. Sometimes students take this class thinking it's going to be like an education course, so they're going to have to write papers um, or write lesson plans. You won't really have to do any of that. We are going to really dive into kindergarten through eighth grade math, and instead of, for instance, making sure that you know how to add fractions, we're going to be looking at the math behind what is needed to add fractions. Do you need a common denominator? Why do you need a common denominator? We're going to use manipulatives to explore this. In your case, they're going to be virtual manipulatives. Um, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. You should be aware that this is a 200 level class. What that means is that it's going to be more difficult than a 100 level class. You've probably either taken um, college math, which is like a 141, 142, 145 class, uh, or you may have taken uh, college algebra, so like a 151, a 155, a course like that. This is going to be different than those courses, and I wanna make sure you're properly prepared. You are definitely going to want to spend at least two hours a day on this course. I don't say that to scare you, I say that so that you have an appropriate amount of time built into your schedule to be successful. I will also tell you that students that put the work in and have a positive mindset and are not afraid to work with others do really well in this course. So don't be afraid that it's 200 level, but I want you to have realistic expectations. If you're wondering of ways to get a hold of me, there's actually a few really good ways. One of the requirements for this course will be that you register in a program called Remind. What's cool about this program is it allows you to text message me or other people in our class without having to ever ask for somebody's phone number. So this is a way to get the fastest response from me. My second way is to message me through either More or Canvas. I try and respond to all messages within 12 hours, although you'll see in my syllabus it says within 24. Feel free to, if you don't hear back from me, within, I usually tell students six hours, assuming it's not overnight. Feel free to message me again and just say, hey, I just wanna make sure this didn't get buried because I get a lot of messages and sometimes that does happen and I don't want you to feel alone in all of this. So you can send me a message through more, that would be my first choice, Canvas would be my second. Lastly, you can also send me an email. My email address is marcia.corby at phoenixcollege.edu, and you can always message through there as well. Let's talk about the materials that you're gonna need for this course. You will want to go out and buy a 100-page composition notebook. Notice that it has the really nice binding on the edge. These are about 50 cents, Walmart, Staples, you name it, lots of places sell them. They actually have some very pretty ones. If you wanna splurge for the extra 50 cents, you can get a colored one. Um, you wanna make sure that it has the binding and not the spiral binding. Reason being, this holds up much better over time. Um, a lot of my students do find it nice to have a spiral notebook as well so that they can show the work for their homework in their spiral notebook, save this for notes, um, the foldables, things like that that we're gonna do in class. Speaking of that, if there's any of you out there that would consider yourself whole to part people, let me help you out. I'm totally one of those people. Uh, a whole to part person is someone that likes to see the end result before they get started versus there are some people that that's overwhelming to them. They'd rather just have these little tiny pieces along the way that they can then get to the end product on their own. I'm a whole to part person. So I wanna give you a peek as to what a notebook looks, a finished notebook looks like for 256 or 257. This notebook actually happens to be mine from 257. Um, you'll notice that it gets a little thick and that's due to all the fun stuff that we put inside of it. So we um, do lots of little foldables, which are kind of fun. We have notes in here that we take. Um, we have fun colored paper. Let's see if I can find another one here. 
Uh, sometimes I have you put homework in here. So just all kinds of fun stuff that goes um, inside your notebook. What's cool about this is it's a resource that you can now take with you and keep in your classroom forever. So if you have a moment where you're like, oh, I can't remember what addition strategies we talked about in college, you can reference your notebook. I've even had some students tell me how they use it to tutor other students, um, or even if you're a parent, help their other parent friends with their kids common core math so this is a really fun resource that you'll get to keep at the end of our semester the other thing you're going to want is something to color with so one of the requirements for your notebook is that you use color in it so this can be colored pens colored pencils markers I suppose crayons although I don't think many students use crayons um, I personally love colored pens that are erasable so you can buy these on Amazon for about nine dollars depending on how many you get um, and they're really nice in case you make a mistake and you need to erase uh, you also might want some highlighters things like that so you're gonna want some stuff to uh, add color to your notebook you're also gonna want a glue stick. And I say not a bottle of glue, but a glue stick, because the bottle of glue, the liquid really dries really crunchy. The glue stick drives a little cleaner. So one glue stick and also a pair of scissors for you to have at home. Lastly, you'll notice that on our course, it shows that you're required to buy a $15 book uh, from the bookstore. And this is called Carnegie Learning. It used to be called Math Power, um, but basically it was a resource written for parents a couple years ago to help them understand the math strategies for Common Core. Um, the beauty of it is that it's half in English and half in Spanish. So this is not a textbook you're gonna sell back at the end of the semester. This is one you'll keep and add it to your classroom library. Um, it is $15 at the bookstore. You can also order a digital version on um, Amazon or Kindle or the iTunes store uh, for $5. However, I will tell you that the digital version does not have Spanish in it. So I would highly recommend splurging for the $15 and just getting this. You'll also need it for $257. It will be helpful to help give you another resource to show you the strategies that we're going to talk about for the next two semesters. So we've got your materials, we've got how you can get a hold of me. Um, one last thing, you will be required to work with others in this course. Uh, so you'll wanna make some friends virtually um, and even maybe come up with a way that you can meet. Some people in the past use Marco Polo if you've ever used that app, um, Zoom, Google Meets, things like that but there will be group projects that you'll be required to do. Some of them I'll be assigning you group members, some of them I'll let you pick. You're also going to have to do these things called home assignments and it stands for hands-on manipulative explorations. So you're gonna use the virtual manipulatives and take screenshots to show me your work as you um, work through those and your thinking. So make sure you know how to do screenshots on your computer um, and if you need to reach out and let's touch base on that, we can get you started with that as well. Let me tell you one other thing that you may want to peek at before we get started with the class. You will notice in our more course that there is something called preview assignments. Um, these assignments, are, again, are going to give you a chance to brush up if you forgot how to add, subtract, multiply, divide fractions, or you're like, I can't ever remember um, what a prime number is. Things like that, you might want to brush up on some of that math because when we go into a lesson, I'm going to assume that you you know that already, that you've already mastered that content, um, that you're good to go. So those preview assignments or those brush up assignments are really helpful in just making sure if you need some help filling in the gaps, maybe there's a little gap in your mathematical knowledge there. We're going to have a great semester. I'm so excited that you're in our class. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you need anything and I will see you online very soon.